Welcome to Electron Online and in this example we're going to show you how to calculate the force on a current carrying wire in a magnetic field. Notice the magnetic field is pointing out of the board. We have a current carrying wire. In this case it's not a straight wire, it's a semicircle uh, shape. And notice that the current goes into the board. So assume, assume we have a wire coming like this, going down around the B field like this and then coming back out in this direction. So the only portion of the wire that's affected by the B field is this portion right here because in this direction you can see that it's parallel to the B field. In this direction it's parallel to the B field so there's no effect between the current in those portions of the wire and the B field only in the section right here where the direction is always going to be perpendicular to the B field. Alright, so how do you do that? Well again, what you want to do is you want to take a small little current segment, let's say this segment right here. There you go, this is your little DL. So your small little line segment DL and that's going to be a vector quantity because we're going to have a direction associated with it, the same as the direction of the current. And then you can see that the B field is out of the board, so the angle between these, the line segment and the B field is going to be 90 degrees, so it's going to be perpendicular to each other. Now we want to find out what the force is on that particular segment right there. So we take a right hand rule, fingers in the direction of the current, then you have to turn your hand to point your fingers in the direction of the B field and your thumb points in that direction so the force is outward and I'm looking for my pink color pen here. So you're going to have a force in this direction, let's call that the DF caused by the small little line segment DL inside the magnetic field. Now notice if we draw a line from the front end of that little DL segment and a line from the back end of the little DN segment, you can see that this forms a very small angle, it's called that angle D theta, and the distance from there to there, let's call that R, and of course there's a reason why we need that, because we're going to convert DL to R and theta. Alright, what is the strength of DF? Well, the strength of DF is going to be equal to I, the strength of the current, times the uh, B field, times the length of the wire, DL, and times the angle between the angle between the direction of the current and the B field. So that would be times the sine of the theta, the angle. That would be 90 degrees in this case. And of course that would be the magnitude of DF. The way, the way we write it in vector form it would be equal to DF is equal to I times dl cross b. And dl cross b includes of course the angle sine of theta because the magnitude of a cross product is the magnitude of the one vector dl times the magnitude of the second vector b times the sine of the angle between them. Alright, so now we want to find out what the total force is, but before we do that we have to realize another thing. If we divide that df into its two components, the x and y component, we get the following. So here would be the df in the x direction, df in the x direction, and here would be the df in the y direction. And then on top of that, if we do something on the other side, let's say we have another line segment right here, let's, let's call this a small little dl segment right there, and then you can see that the current would be in this direction, so you point your fingers in the direction of the current, then you curl your fingers in the direction of the B field, the thumb points in the direction of the force, so that way you have a DF in this direction. So there would be a DF caused by this small little line segment right there, which also has an X and Y component. So here you can see that you have the DF in the X direction and you have a DF in the Y direction. And then you notice that the DFs in the Y direction for both segments are upward, so they're additive. But the DF segments in the X direction over on this side of the curve, it'll point to the right. On this side of the curve, it'll point to the left. And since it's perfect symmetry between the left and the right side, those two components will essentially cancel out when you integrate over the semicircle. So the only component you need is a DF in the Y direction. So that means we need to find DF in the Y direction in terms of DF relative to some sort of angle. So if we call this angle right here, if we call this angle theta, then we can call this angle theta right here, and then we see that the df in the y direction, the y component of the df, is equal to the hypotenuse df times the sine of the angle theta. So therefore we can write that df in the y direction equals df times the sine of the angle theta. Now, 
in this part of the equation, I B dl times the sine of theta. Notice that in this case, and maybe I should use a different angle for that, because I don't want to confuse the two angles. So instead of calling this theta, I'm going to call this angle phi. Oh, I have theta there. Maybe I'll leave it as theta. Maybe I'll change this angle right here, call this angle phi. The reason why I want to call this angle phi is because it's not the same angle as this angle theta there. The angle phi is the angle between the direction of the line segment or the direction of the current and the direction of the B field. And notice, in that case, the direction of the current is this way and the direction of the B field is that way. So it's this angle right here which has nothing to do with this angle right there. And that angle, no matter where you are on the line segment, will always be 90 degrees. So that means that this here, the sine of phi, that will always be 1 because the sine of 90 degrees is equal to phi, uh, is equal to 1. So the sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1. So therefore, that becomes 1, and you can ignore that angle. And finally, we now have an equation for df in the y direction. df in the y direction is equal to df, which is equal to I B times DL, that would be this portion right here, times, and I never finished this one off, times the sine of theta, because we only want the Y component, not the total DF. All right, now we have the Y component of the DF of the small little line segment, now we can go ahead and integrate over the entire semicircle. So now we can say that the total force F is equal to the sum of all the little DFs in the Y direction. And we're going to integrate from zero all the way to 180 degrees, or we can do it twice that from zero to 90 degrees, which I tend to prefer. So what I'm going to do that, I'm going to rewrite this, I'm going to say that's equal to two times the integral of all the df in the y direction going from theta equals zero to theta equals pi over two or 90 degrees. And simply double it because that'll give us double the force, half of this segment and then another half of the other segment like that. And then we plug in what that is equal to. So this is equal to two times the integral from zero to pi over two of the current times the B field. Those are all constants times dl. Ooh, now I need something for dl. Notice dl can be expressed in terms of the radius and the angle d theta. We can say that dl, which is the small little arc length, is equal to r times d theta. And we can plug this into the equation. Instead of dl, we can write this as r times d theta times the sine of theta. And now we simply have to integrate over the angle theta. So i, b, and r are all constants. So they can come outside the integral sign. So this is equal to 2 i, b, r times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the sine of theta d theta. And of course, the integral of the sine of theta is equal to the negative cosine. So this is equal to minus 2 i b r times the cosine of theta evaluated from 0 to pi over 2. Plug in the upper limit, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Lower limit, cosine of 0 is negative is 1, so this is equal to minus 2 i b r times the cosine of 90 degrees, so the cosine of 90 degrees minus the cosine of 0 degrees, which is equal to minus 2 i b r times 0 minus 1. And of course, the minus 1 times the minus 1 becomes plus 1, so this is equal to 2 I, B, R, and that would be the total force on that wire. Now here's a very interesting part. Imagine we had a straight wire. Imagine we had a wire going from there to there. So let me use a different color. Let's say we had a wire going straight from there to there, carrying the same amount of current. What would be the force on that wire? The force on that wire would be F is equal to I times B times L. Now notice that the length from there to there is exactly equal to twice the radius. Now if you look at our answer here, twice the radius is equal to the length of a wire segment from there to there. In other words, the total force on a wire that runs like this with a current running through it inside this magnetic field, the force on that in the y direction is exactly the same as the force on a single wire running from there to there. It doesn't matter. 
which, by the way, if that is true, we can probably surmise, probably say that if there was another wire that was running through the B field like this, the force on that wire would also equal IBL, the distance between those two points. And that's an interesting conclusion from what we just saw. So that's how we do that.